Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, if you're a regular follower of the channel, you may remember a few weeks back I posted a video where I installed these uh, panniers on the side of my Triumph Speed Twin. These are uh, really nice panniers uh, from Hepco and Becker, really expensive, but they look really good, I think, on the Triumph Speed Twin. However, I got into the Hepco and Becker panniers because I want to actually get some storage on my Kawasaki Z900, my newest bike, a bike which is sitting over there, and that I'm still in the honeymoon period with. Unfortunately, Hepco and Becker didn't make the um, attachments to allow me to attach those um, panniers onto the side of the Kawasaki. So I put this out in various videos and people recommended to me that I should take a look at the SW Motec panniers for the Kawasaki. So I've done exactly that. So for the big Kawasaki, I've got myself a set of legend panniers uh, together with some really subtle little mounts that SW Motec do. Uh, I'm not renowned for my garage skills. Hopefully they'll be dead easy to fit. But uh, anyway, I'll show you the panniers first. I'll whop them on the bike and then we'll go for a ride and see how they fare. All right, folks. So the bags I've got from SW Motec are these. These are the called the legend gear side bags. They come in black or brown. I've gone for the black because I think that'll work best with the bike. Before I show you how they fit on, let me just show you the bags. They're, as you may have noticed, they're a slightly different size each if you look on the back, they've got the same attachment arrangement. But look, that one's got that much distance on the top, and then that one's got that lot, and that's got none. So this one goes on the side, basically, where the exhaust is, uh, because obviously there's not quite as much room there. So, And they've got this uh, quite simple-looking mounting arrangement, a, a little button there that releases them. Can you see that? Uh, but otherwise, it just clogs into some locating lugs that we'll have a look at in a minute. So these are the bags. They're made out of a sort of a wax cotton, um, which is kind of shower-proofy. Uh, a little bit of leather at the bottom. They're the type that you, you know, roll top. So if I just unroll, I'll show you. Like that. So they go quite big if you need them to. I think these are 9.8 litres, something like that. But they come in varying um, sizes, depending on the bike you've got and indeed what size you want. And then a Velcro top. And then inside, there's a waterproof liner, which is also roll top and Velcro, so you can actually put stuff in there in a waterproof manner. And as you can see, that is quite, there's quite a lot of room in there, ample in there, I think, for you know going away on tour on your own uh, for a long weekend or whatever. Possibly even if you've got a very um, unusual wife, you might be able to go away as a couple of those two. So, you know, quite a bit of storage in there. But, so that's that, so we've got to get them mounted on the bike. Stay. Now, to mount them on the bike, they come with very subtle brackets which I was quite pleased about uh, and which is why I think so many people recommend it. That's it for the bracket. There's some little lugs that I have to attach on here and this goes on the side of the bike somehow but there's not much to see when the uh, when the panniers aren't on there. Uh, of course it comes with loads of mounting bits and bobs that I'm going to bolt on there and then I've got to uh, slap it on the side of the bike. What could possibly go wrong? Let's get on with it. Right before I get too far into this I've noticed in the nick of time that in fact the left and right panning mounts are quite different, not only in the mounts themselves, but the hardware that goes with them. There's a little um, barcode thing there that you scan on your phone, then you print off the instructions. So I did indeed do that. Uh, I've learned the hard way that you should actually follow the instructions. And there's like a little parts list there about what bit goes on what. So pay attention to that. I've sorted them out so that I've got my left set and my right set. Uh, so I know what's going on. So uh, hopefully it should be straightforward from now on in. I'll get cracking. Right. That's all the little lugs on that the panniers locate onto. Now to put the brackets on the bike. Okay, so the Z900 RS that I have is the SE model, and that comes with the fancy Olin's rear suspension, which means that you've got this little outboard uh, adjuster here. And uh, where the way the brackets fit on is it's on the um, footrest hangers and then onto a, a bolt that's underneath the seat there. So it comes around here. Now, of course, uh, these particular SW Motec brackets are designed for the SE, so it fits. But I suspect that's why the previous um, ones that I had from Hepco and Becker wouldn't fit on this bike uh, because they haven't got a specific SE set yet. So uh, I think that's what the, the problem is. Anyway, I'll crack on put one on this side it will be the same on the other side minus that of course and then we should be good to go how hard can it be it turns out you need about a million pairs of hands to do this because these I've got uh, the adjuster the foot hanger the bracket and all these spacers and washers to all go on at the same time they've all got to line up this is uh, quite a challenge when there's just one of you so I think I might put a bit of tape on these to hold those in place, just to make life a little bit easier. So, a little bit of masking tape, thought it'd be clever to hold everything in place. So I've got the washers and the spacers and everything. Went to put it on there, and uh, I've of course, Sod's Law would say, I put them on the wrong way around, so uh, let's do that again. All right, take two, looks a little bit better this time. So now we're gonna attempt to get everything lined up on there. I'm just wondering whether I should attempt to do the rear at the same time. I think I'll at least 
undo the bolt in there so we're ready to go when we need it. Come on. Jesus. Why are things that meant to be easy always so hard? I'm now having a spacer crisis. I think I might have put the wrong spacers on here. Okay, so I've got the wrong spacers on here. Third time lucky, maybe. Oh, for pity's sake. This is why I hate spanning on bikes. Even the simplest things are always troublesome. Oh, please. Okay, so it's the right spacers now. And it goes on there like that. It goes in there like that. Right. But according to the diagram, number eight spacer should go up the top there with the number six bolt. The number eight spacer is the... The only trouble is, I don't seem to have enough spacers. Unless there aren't spaces on the other side, perhaps that's it. Let's not panic until we get to the other side. All right, so that one goes in there. I wonder if it would make sense to put that one in first. Perhaps it would actually. At least we're in the right ballpark then. Then we've got a chance of holding it all together. What an absolute faff. Right, might do that fully up yet because I'm going to want a little bit of wiggle room. So uh, we'll leave that. It's not going to let anything fall. Well, at that end anyway. All right, now I stand a chance of lining things up at this end. A slim chance, but a chance. In you go. Yes, that's clearly the way to do that. Why don't the instructions tell you these things? Right, now all I need is the reservoir. Right, reservoir's on, we're getting close. And then, of course the exhaust is hanging off this lot as well, just to add complexity. So close. You get the general idea. I wanna keep fighting with this until these go in and then I'll talk to you in a moment. Right, after a sheer amount of faffery, probably 20 minutes of fighting around trying to get this to align. I've at last got that side attached. I'll crack on with the other one. Right, just let that dangle while I'm doing these. Needless to say, this size is much easier because you haven't got all that other faff of the exhaust and the Owens adjuster to handle. So if you've got the non-SE, this is going to be much easier than I'm making this look. And I'm making it look really hard, I know. I've got a knack for that. And I've just realised I haven't put the spacer on that one. What an idiot. Ah. And in putting that spacer on, I've now spotted that I've put the spacer on the wrong way on the other side. So I've got to take the other side completely off and do it again. <sighs> I love spannering, I really do. So you know, that fits on there absolutely perfectly well. No messing around required. All the threads going nice, he says. That has gone on there. Relatively easy, straightforward. Why couldn't the other side have been like that? Right, I'm gonna get around the other side and have another go at that. Right, I'm back on the nightmare side of proceedings where having learnt from the other side, which was a piece of cake, uh, I've learnt the problem was, or the issues I was having with getting this lined up properly, 
It's because I've got the spacer on here incorrect. I've got it on the outside. I mean, it's ridiculous actually that I've made that error. But I'm gonna take the spacer off, move it to the top, and then hopefully everything will line up fine. Let's give that a whirl. Oh, at long last, I think we can say they're done. Right, let's do a test fit of the panniers themselves. Right, so these little bits here, latch onto these here is the idea i think right let's see what happens then so i'm going to stand in front of you while i try and latch this on two three bingo cool well that seems all right let me uh, stick the one on the other side i'll put something in them to pad them out a bit then we'll go for a ride and have a look in the daylight see what they actually look like on the bike properly all right, so welcome aboard the uh, Kawasaki Z900 RSSE, which I now have the SW Motec panniers attached to. I'm just uh, riding out a little way so I can park up and show you what these look like on the bike in the sunshine. And I have to say, uh, fitting those was way more troublesome, or I made it look way more troublesome than it needed to be. I think it was a combination of factors, actually. I think it was... Uh, I blame the instructions, uh, they're just not that good. Now I know how they're meant to be fitted, it's straightforward and hopefully you will have learned if you're going to fit some of these and you see the trem tremendous trouble I had, you'll understand uh, you know, the way it all works with the spaces and so on. And it wasn't clear from the instructions, I thought I'd uh, read those, I read them many times and I thought I got that all sorted. And then my usual cack handedness, I mean, putting that space the wrong way around was pretty uh, inexcusable. So overall, I made a real meal out of that. It should have been very, very simple. And in fact, they are very simple to mount. I just made it look hard. Anyway, they're on there now. Let me uh, find a place to park up with some decent light and I'll show you what they look like on the bike. Actually, maybe the light isn't so good to look at it here, but uh, the light's starting to fade a bit. Let me put the other camera on. There we go, hopefully you've uh, got a bit of a better view there. I think they, the bags look pretty good actually. On this side without the exhaust in particular, which is the larger bag, I think it looks really neat. Obviously it looks better when there's actually stuff in it and this is a, in a fairly small, you know, it's got a lot more capacity to go than I've got it there. It's not that full, but I think that looks pretty neat. If we come around the other side, try not to get killed by any passing traffic. You see that bag's a lot smaller on that side, but uh, nonetheless, looks pretty neat, I think. All right, let me get out the road and uh, I'll show you what they look like, or, or rather, I'll take that bag off and show you what it looks like without the bag, so it's just neat. All right, bag's off. So, uh, come around here, try not to get too much flare from the sun, but failing miserably. If I come down here, try and shield you, see? Looks pretty neat, doesn't it, from uh, without the bag, from that angle? Looks all right. So yeah, overall, despite all the faff to put them on that I managed to uh, have with it, I think they look pretty good. All right, uh, no excuse now not to go touring, is there? All right, so I know uh, what you're thinking. How much does a bag set up like the one I fit today? How much is that gonna cost me? Well, it does depend on the size of the bags you go for and the bike you're fitting them to. But the list price of those bags for this, the Kawasaki Z900 RS, something like 485 pounds. That's the two bags and the bracket tree. So work on about, about 500 quid for a similar setup. It does sound like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but when you're considering what you're getting, I think that's not bad value when you think those Hepco and Becker leather cases that I put on my Speed Twin were well over twice that. And these do look neat. Of course, the proof will be in what it's like when I go touring with them, which I do hope to do in the next year or two on this bike. And of course, if I do that, I will take you along. So stick around and stay tuned to the channel uh, to watch that. Do hit the subscribe button if you're not done so already. That way you won't miss any of that. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until when, this has been the Mr. Fly Cheerio.